Who's calling me even, you know? Yeah. I think you guys are good to go. Are we on? Yeah. Oh. Neato. Sweet. Okay. I'm Patty Hun. I'm with Leader Games. And today we're going to be learning how to paint tiny minis. So we have Dan Molson with us. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to like turn it over to you since you're the professional. Sweet. <laughs> professional. Strong word. <laughs> um, so... Uh, the first thing, paint, I did a little bit of an example of the Mimic, so the Creepy Creepy Mimic. Um, this one is not finished yet, um, but we will do these ones from start to finish. Um, so a lot of what we'll be using, just to get these like nice and pretty for the tabletop, it doesn't have to be super, super fancy, um, is some of the Citadel Contrast paints. I'll put this right in between the two of us here. He's really very cool. graciously yeah. allowed me to use all his supplies, and I'm going to do my best not to break anything, spill anything, and then also just paint well. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fun part, right? <laughs> so with the contrast paints, you have to think of it kind of a little bit more almost like a watercolor. Okay. So it's a self-settling paint. So what it does is it will actually sit in the recesses, so all those nice little creases uh, in the wood if that's super visible, but all those little creases in the wood, um, it'll actually pull all those art out and it'll kind of darken those and leave the raised edges a little bit lighter. Okay. So what I tend to do with this is they advertise it as one thick coat, um, but I go not too heavy. I'll just put a little bit of the paint on the brush. All right. And then I tend to use the cap, which is probably bad, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, and then just basically going in and just kind of, you can see you're kind of pushing that paint around. Mm -hmm. So that darkest edge of the paint, you're kind of pushing towards the edges. So it'll shade where that wood kind of touches the edge mm -hmm. of the thing. So kind of almost pushing it. Ah. And then pushing it towards those recesses. So, and with this, you don't have to worry too much about needing a little bit more paint. And then if I get too much, like this is probably a little bit too loaded, I'll just tap it ever so gently. And you see the, the paper okay. towel just soaks it up super, super nicely. And I, will... I can totally do this. Yeah. <laughs> so you're pushing it around a little bit. And if you ever, so like any of the, the okay. raised parts, so if you have it too thick, you can just kind of push it around when when the paint starts to dry off of the brush a little bit, mm -hmm. that means it'll actually soak up a little bit more of that. So if you ever have a spot where you don't want it, you can actually take a dry brush and just tap it, and it'll soak up the excess really well. I'm convinced that this is actual magic. This paint has made my life infinitely easier because I tend to do stuff. Um, I do some stuff to, to very showpiece qualities. Um, but I have a lot of friends that are much better painters than I. <laughs> um, so I tend to do a little bit more of, I'll do like army painting, things like that, tabletop gaming stuff, where uh, just having something painted at all sometimes can be more of a benefit. You don't have gray plastic on the board or mm -hmm. anything like that. Um, oh, God. Sorry. No. I dropped it. I ruined it. <laughs> it's gone forever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And this dries relatively quickly. Okay. So, like, you dropping it, even if it touched the paper towel, it's more likely than not going to keep the paint on it. It's not going to... Yeah, that's looking fantastic. <laughs> and you just have that little bit of a corner there. I was planning on showing up here with the oh. Bob Ross wig today. Oh, my gosh. That would have been perfect. Yeah, they were all sold out. <laughs> I was going to say, that was one costume my partner and I were debating doing as a couple's costume. One of and, you could be Bob uh, Ross, and the other one could be a happy it. tree. Yep. <laughs> one could be the happy tree, or uh, there was uh, some Halloween stores actually had it as a, uh, you could be just the painting. It was like an easel oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Except I had a feeling with what he does to dry off his brushes, where he whacks it on the, the edge of the easel, I had a feeling I would just get whacked by a paintbrush a couple too many times. <laughs> Gotta know each other's habits. Is your partner exactly. also a painter? Uh, not as much with minis. We've done a little bit of mini stuff, mm -hmm. um, but not a crazy amount. Mm -hmm. um, so it is something that I just do a ton, uh, and they will play a lot of video. They're much better at video games than I, actually. I just painted one whole side. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've done. <laughs> <laughs> well, the best part is I've you done have it. three more to go. <laughs> so let me 
Let me hold this a little bit closer to the camera, yeah, actually. Yeah, let's see. I tend to just squirrel in and hold things too close to my body while I paint. Um, and the best part is if you mess up a little bit, most of the rest of this mini is going to be metallics. Mm -hmm. um, so those solid colors are going to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit less opaque, so they're going to be a little bit more solid, so you can cover up any of the spots where you get that. Okay. That brown into not the wood grain. Ooh. Like I'm getting it all over the lock right now. Okay, as long as I have a chance to fix my mistakes. Yep. Yeah, in worst case, the worst thing you can ever do is if uh, you get it to something it really can't be on or you want to use another contrast paint on that area, um, you have that primer color that you can kind of, just a tan color you can kind of cover over with and just kind of start from scratch in that space, which is... All right. Another trick, even using non-contrast, just regular acrylic paints, just going back over with like the primer. Okay. Um, I just want to remind people who are watching, if you have any questions about Bast in general, or if you just want to pick Patrick's brain, he is in the comments, uh, and he's legally obligated to answer those. So. <laughs> By Patty Law. By Patty Law. <laughs> I'm realizing that I have no control over my hand on like a very small <laughs> scale. <laughs> that is valid. It's one of those one of those things you don't think you you don't think about while you're, until you're doing it. It's just how you how you're using your hand. Or <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to remember the last time I did. So my mini painting experience is super limited. I've painted exactly one, and it was a dog. Okay, good I choice of mini. It was probably like more of a wolf. I don't remember what it was from. I just like took okay. it from a friend of mine. And, and they just were... like, I'm trying this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're going to get me to paint anything, it should be spooky and or a puppy. So. Yeah, that is valid. <laughs> and there are plenty of amazing spooky minis in a mysterious manner. Oh, for sure. I love... I'm super excited about Sniffy here. Uh -huh. I would love to see Sniffy puppy. fully painted. Yeah. You said that you already have a set that's already done, right? Um, I have a set of the first game, okay. uh, Crystal Caverns. Um, and uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it was so much fun to paint up. I really enjoyed the goblins because I myself am basically just a humanoid goblin <laughs> uh, that just hoards paints instead of treasure. I love it. Or trash. Um, so all the goblins were super, super fun. And then I actually have the thief here as well. It is an example of kind of a painted mini. Okay. Um, let's see. So I got three of the sides. You have three done? Kind of started. I'm being a little bit messy, so okay. you can see we're on the little squares on oh, there. Oh, okay. So I can go wild. And on the lock. So you can go a little bit more wild because a lot of that will be covered up by that metallic. You can also see your feet. Oh, there we go. Got it. I'm just gonna splatter mine with red so it looks really bloody anyways. <laughs> there you go. Gotta keep that spooky factor up. There is a another paint from Citadel that's called Blood for the Blood God, and it's about what you'd expect. It's a uh, technical paint that's Super, super creepy looking when you look at the pot. It basically looks like coagulated blood. Oh, delicious. Um, but you put it on a mini, and it basically is like a blood splatter effect, like all uh -huh. in one. And it's got a little bit of like a latex coat to it, so it um, actually will uh, have that glossy sheen to it and kind of come on a little bit thicker, too. <laughs> Patrick says... I could listen to Dan describing things all day. So soothing. <laughs> I've been told I have a very just calm, calm voice. I used to work at a call center and as a manager at the call center because I was apparently too good at calming people down, <laughs> <laughs> um, which leads to me getting all of the angry phone calls that I have to take. But luckily, it ended up with those people being less than angry by the time they were done. I don't think I've ever been described as calm. This might actually be the most calm I've been. That's valid. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, so we are going to be doing uh, brown for the chest. We yep. have metallic paints for the edges, right? Yep, so we have a gold and a silver, uh, which will be probably the, the edges I'll do gold. Okay. And uh, the lock I'll do gold. 
and then the four little points on each side, and then the, the handle on that side, um, I'll do in silver just to give it a little bit more diversity, kind of a little bit more interesting color. Historically accurate. Yeah. Oh. And the best part with things like wood texture. Oh, go for oh. it. Oh, thank you. Uh, the best thing with wood texture is anything that's natural, you can make a little bit of mistakes and not worry about it because the, the natural order of things is not necessarily always super perfect um, or balanced. So especially like wood grains um, for most of the bases of the minis, even though they're in a mysterious manner, I still did the rocky texture I did with the uh, first game. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll grab this real quick. So I added a little bit of a texture, um, but you can use anything from just like uh, super, super light wall epoxy, um, kind of like you'd put on your, your walls at home or the walls of the office kind of type thing. Or you can use Games Workshop makes some texture paints that are super nice for basing that you just put on with like a brush or like I have some sculpting tools I'll use. Um, and uh, it basically just looks like rocky ground, just right out of the pot, which is super, super nice. That's very convenient. Yeah. I feel like that's, if you're going to get me into any type of hobby, that's probably a good selling point. It has to be somewhat convenient. Yeah. And or forgiving, right? And forgiving. Yeah. <laughs> Please Anything be where you forgiving. Can, in the, the true Bob Ross idiom, just happy little, happy little mistakes. Just... Well, I'm making plenty of happy mistakes on this chest so far. And you would never know it. <laughs> That's the one fun part about uh, anything you're doing with like visual art. You will always be your worst critic. So half the stuff I'll paint up and post or put out there, I'll always be like, you, you just can't unsee any of the mistakes you make. <laughs> yeah. And you'll always be the one that notices them. But more often than not, people will just look at the finished product and just adore it yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just slowly going to gravitate the mimic towards my mouth and just snack time <laughs> you have just to eat the chest the, before it eats you the, the true mini goblin just slowly gravitate it towards my mouth and just gnaw on it a little bit that adds real texture right I really like that you self identify as the goblin yeah basically I, I am also kind of like our store goblin at the, the store <laughs> I work at too we, we have another employee that also identifies kind of as the store goblin um, so it's kind of a, a duo of goblins at our store which is pretty fantastic I've always described myself as a raccoon um, so I'm a graphic designer I don't make a lot of our own like original assets I just kind of dig through a bunch of files, find the right thing, and like smush them together on something else. That's got, that takes its own unique set of skills. Mm -hmm. I have uh, one company that we just started working with uh, at the store that we just started selling their minis and their game. Um, just sent us over a bunch of their, their marketing materials. So I'm slowly going through that myself and finding yeah. that I, I, I have an okay eye for that, but not amazing. <laughs> Goblins and raccoons, they're very similar. So I have most of that wood texture done, so you can see, so I'm just slowly rotate it, that it's got all that texture kind of covered in for all the wood bits, and that took all of, what, a couple of minutes? Um, so let's see where you're at with that. I think so, yeah, done. you got most of it too. So. I was not sure ever about the top whether to paint it metallic, oh, that's um, fair. like the edges, or I just painted this one like wood. I think the other one I did, yeah, I painted it like wood as well. I feel like that makes the most sense. Cause the worst case is if you ever screw it up, you can always just switch it to the metallics later <laughs> if you would like. So, one of those things where an, another little cheat that you can kind of, uh, kind of have a little bit more of a forgiving practice. So, and what I will do. This just a little bit, actually. Pull out. So uh, sometimes I will use what's called a wet palette okay. to paint. Um, that involves a little bit of setup. Basically, it's a sponge and kind of like parchment paper. Um, actually, let me shake the paint quick. 
Um, and what that does is basically it leaves your paints uh, wet longer and okay. keeps them. So like say you're working on a project and you have a little bit more unique colors or something you mixed yourself, um, you can actually uh, work with that for a much longer period of time. Like I've had friends leave a single color in their palette for over a week. Oh, wow. Um, and still gone back to it and been able to use it. Um, I am a goblin of a minis painter, so I don't use mine as often as I probably should. <laughs> Um, it also helps you save from wasting a bunch of paint. As you can see, my actual little mm -hmm. palette here, there is just a whole bunch of dried paint on both sides of it um, from paint that I've basically wasted. Um, Rip. Yep. There's R.I.P. Uh, all my, my paint budget. <laughs> um, and so I will put just a little bit of that metallic in there. So this is just like a lead belcher. So a little bit of a dark, we're going to start a little bit darker, okay. even though we're going to add a wash to it later. Um, and the wash, what it'll do is it'll kind of darken it up because the two that we'll use for the two metallics is a Nom Oil, which is just a blackish grayish wash for the silver. So mm -hmm. basically what the these do is they're a little less pigmented than the uh, contrast, okay. but they do a similar thing where they sit in those recesses, so it kind of shades and shadows everything supernaturally. I've seen lots of memes so. about null oil. Yeah, people <laughs> people also spill their pots of oil very frequently. That is kind of a uh, kind of a running gag for that, um, and I have done that I think once in my life. <laughs> and then I started for most of mine that I have at home. I've actually glued. Uh, more hammer bases to them. So okay. it's got like a little bit of a wider base to it. Um, so giving Games Workshop more of my money as I spill more of their product. That's what they're hoping for. Exactly. People, <laughs> exactly. people also in this hobby are kind of clumsy. <laughs> I, I'm probably their perfect client in, in so many ways. I spend so much money on their, their stuff as well. And I'm going to get a little bit of the paint off. And then I'm going to take just a little bit of this. Okay. Um, and just kind of rub it off so I get a little bit. So I'm going to start touching a little bit of those four points that are just metallic on each side. Oh, goodness. They're so tiny. So this is where it's a little less forgiving. So just kind of taking just the tip. And actually, I'm going to add a little bit of a, just a drop of paint thinner to kind of thin it out a little bit. Um, so in this way, what that does is it makes it a little bit thinner, a little bit less goopy for when you're kind of putting it on there. Okay. Um, let's see. So just kind of, so since those points are kind of raised edges, I'm just kind of touching it just to that one edge. Okay. Because that, uh, that basically that wash that we almost kind of put on um, will kind of hit the other four edges that are leading up to that flat edge. But when people are looking at it, all they're going to see is those four flat points. Okay. Um, and with it being metallic, it's another kind of trick that your eye is just going to see the shiny bit. It's not going to be paying attention to where the wood grain kind of ends and the shiny bit begins. But they're hearing us talk about it, so now we're exactly. going to be looking for it's it. It's one of those things, once you tell people about it, they can't kind of unsee it. <laughs> <laughs> um, just like how if you make any little mistakes, you're also the one that can't unsee it. It's like I've heard a lot of musicians talk about things that they've made for mistakes while, uh, while oh, recording yeah. music, and it's one of those things where it, it will just haunt them. But... At the end of this, we're going to take both of them, mm -hmm. put it behind our backs, swap them around. <laughs> and see if anyone can guess. Guess who made which one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of the four points on that. I'm tilting it the wrong way. Um, <laughs> so that's got the four little metallic points. And then I'm going to paint these little handles on the side. And now since the, these handles hang out just a little bit further, that's where I'm going to paint the top of the handle, that, okay. that metallic cover. And I have a little bit of that contrast paint that ended up on the handle, mm -hmm. that just going right over it, it just covered it right away super, super easily. So 
So this metallic, will it work similar to the contrast? If you end up putting too much of it, is it easy to To kind of clean up. Um, anything, if you ever make mistakes, just keeping like your base color around, mm -hmm. like this would be kind of like a tan color that would kind of match that base coat. Okay. You can always just go back over with almost like a, a okay. version of that and then just kind of start over. And the contrast, what I do is I just make sure that uh, that base coat kind of blends a little bit closer to it so it's thinning towards the edges so it looks a little bit more natural with where it'll kind of okay. you can kind of pick up and and start from scratch in that area I got really into uh, painting so I missed some questions yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to them uh, let's see which one of the Citadel primers is this so this is actually I actually brought it Ooh. in so let's see if I can get this in focus here so I brought the Vallejo uh, Rattle Can Primer. It's their, I always forget, they don't actually put the, the color on the can for these for some reason, other than just by the barcode. So it is the Vallejo, let me take it out <laughs> of the, the reflective light. It's their Bone White. Um, and we just got these at the store I work at. And that was my first time using Rattle Can Primer in about 14 years. So it was simple enough to use. They give you two nozzles. So like a wide nozzle and a close nozzle. Okay. Um, and so it was actually, I used a little bit of the closer one to get in some of the details and it uh, actually was super easy. Okay. Um, and I even did it in, there's a lot of stuff going around that you can't uh, use rattle can primer when it starts to get cold. Um, you still don't want to use it when there's a lot of moisture in the air, so when it's raining. Um, but I did mm -hmm. it when it was about 30, 40 degrees out, which when I was a kid I did that and it got all clumpy and mm -hmm. spotted. Um, whereas what you got to do is basically get a little bit closer and just make sure you're not layering too heavy. Okay. Because otherwise you'll lose detail. So like the Shadow Knight has all those great, uh, those great little intricacies in the armor and the cloak. Um, if you're a little too close, it would start to obscure those. It would fill those in a little bit. Okay. Um, and is there any going back if you accidentally do that? You can strip it. And that's a, ooh, I'm throwing stuff. Uh, and that's a little bit of a pain because okay. uh, you have to use basically uh, one of the most frequent things is people use a thing called uh, simple green, which is like a degreaser. Mm -hmm. um, like you'll actually see uh, in like kitchens and restaurants and stuff. Um, okay, we've totally used. So we, I have like yeah. a lot of pets. Simple yep. green is also very helpful. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, we have we have some around the store too. Uh, so it's ironically the product we use a, a lot of like retail environments it'll be whatever that green liquid is basically yeah um, that you'll have in a spray bottle in most of your retail stores and uh, yeah you basically give it a bath in that and as what do they say you... the old adage if you want it clean get the green yep <laughs> <laughs> I'm in marketing folks <laughs> that works <laughs> exactly Let's see. We also have questions. Are these teeth going to be pearly whites or little haven't gotten to the dentist in a while? Uh, I was thinking a little haven't gotten to the dentist because there is a contrast paint called Skeleton Horde, um, which is basically like a bone white. So even with it already being in this tan, it'll shade those recesses a little bit of a brownish and give it that little... Okay. I mean, dentist... Yeah, don't I go to the. Don't go to the dentist too often. Have you seen mimics don't go to the dentist too any often. mimics with pearly whites? <laughs> who, Who's in that business? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see your progress. On My progress? Yeah. Oh, God. Gates okay. has finally made it into monitoring the chat after, oh, yeah. after Gates. some Wi-Fi issues. This uh, is Patty. This is my progress. Yeah. It, as you can see, it looks identical to what Dan has been doing. <laughs> I'm sure. But yeah, it's not too bad. I haven't yeah. gotten too crazy. That looks fantastic. Also, Kyle tells uh, tells the chat, don't simple green the pets directly. Do not yeah. simple green the pets direct. Thank you, Kyle. Oh, goodness. What kind of monster would you have to be? No, always indirectly. I'm going to go a little bit of the extra. So. I lied a little bit. I'm going to touch up a little bit of those silver blocks and hit in, hit in the side. I'm going to add a little bit of color where there's still some primer showing through. And I have grown to like, I used to use just a like flat black for most of my primer. Um, and just as I've 
grown with painting a lot, I've started to enjoy using a lot more of like lighter primers. So like this tan, or I do uh, what's called a zenithal highlighting, where you're basically shading it from the top down where the light would hit it most. So I'll okay. do a darker all over, uh, and then a lighter from the top, uh, which I usually do like a gray and uh, like in an actual like stark white and that kind of pre-shades the mini for you. So especially using things like uh, those contrast paints where they, they're they mm -hmm. much more opaque. You're seeing what's underneath it a little bit more. Okay. Because um, they will actually change a little bit of color based on what kind of primer. So I decided to use the tan, um, which GW always says gives it a warmer hue, which is pretty accurate. Um, that tan will give it a little bit warmer, whereas if you're using a gray, it'll give it a little bit of a cooler effect for when you're done. Mm -hmm. um, and we're getting into winter. We'd rather have things to be a little bit warmer. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of memory of a little bit of warmer times, right? <laughs> okay, so these corner bits, mm -hmm. are we going silver or gold? So let's do gold for this. Not to rush you. No, I was touching up a little Sorry. bit. I, I was going a little bit above and beyond and touching up some spots I didn't necessarily so, need to. You'll be able to see. Oh, yeah. Kyle, Kyle Farron uh -huh. is. Oops. Oh my god. I just messed up all of this. <laughs> there go. Kyle Farron is a Detroit modifier, by the way. Oh, oh yeah. Hi, Kyle. Hello. Also, my family's watching and they don't really <laughs> understand all that I do. So, hi, family. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, my family was always very supportive of my Minnie's painting, oh, <laughs> which was always very, very nice. My mom was basically like the store mom for the game store I used to go to. Uh, so you've been doing this up. for a while. Uh, I've been painting mini since I was about 10 or 12 years old. It was it was a nerdy hobby that me and a bunch of friends in middle school, uh, going to the game store and playing card games, used to see the Warhammer rulebook. I think it was the third edition rulebook, mm -hmm. uh, always growing up. And uh, we all chipped in, and it was like a $40 book that we all chipped in using a bunch of our allowances, and then just started painting minis from there. That's so cute! Um, and yeah, uh, a couple of us still do it from that friend group. A couple of them grew out of it a little bit, like, mm -hmm. they, they have big people jobs, whereas I still work at a game store, and I'm just a large child. It's Listen, great. this is our big people job, exactly. and it's totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> you do have people saying hi from Florida. Yeah, that's my brother-in-law. <laughs> Hi, CJ. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's much warmer for them there, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I think I was like looking at somebody's Insta feed the other day, and it was like 82 degrees, and they're out in shorts and a tank and stuff. So I was one super of my, jealous. One of my friends is uh, currently. I keep seeing his updates from from Disney, uh, seeing the new Star Wars exhibit there. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And uh, it looks so much warmer there than it is here. It's, what, like 30s, 40s in the morning? Yeah, it's a bit chilly here right now. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think we're going to see a lot of bundled up Halloween costumes this year. Yeah. Which? Are you getting into this lock? So, yeah, I'm getting ah, a little bit. Okay. So to get in it, I just kind of touch so you can kind of move your brush around a little bit and that'll kind of help hit a little bit of the extra recesses. So instead of trying to just touch the exact point, yeah. pushing down a little bit. And just smushing it around. It's probably terrible brush technique, but uh, these are super cheap brushes anyways. So <laughs> um, I've seen, there's a couple of different schools of thought of what kind of brushes you should have. Um, and there is some people that will spend, like I have one brush that's about a $30 brush, $20, mm -hmm. $30 brush. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a Winsor Newton, uh, Klinsky Sable. Super nice. It's actually not that tiny of a brush. Um, so whereas we're using a brush that's about this big, if you want to see, compared to Oops. my super nice Klinsky Sable, it holds a much finer point, which I'm going to be weird and uh, <laughs> put it in my mouth. Such an um, artist thing to do. <laughs> exactly. Uh, there's no paint on it yet, right? But so it's a much bigger brush. Mm -hmm. So comparatively, it's a much bigger brush, but it actually holds a much finer point. Okay. Um, so what would you use something like that for? So I've actually used that to paint eyes on minis. So like oh. the uh, Paladin from the first game, mm -hmm. uh, I painted her eyes, which the nice thing about the eyes for a lot of the minis here, um, let's see if, it's a little bit hard to see it with the flat primer. Um, but they actually have a little bit of texturing on the eyes. Um, 
So whereas you can see there's the little bit of iris yeah. there, so it actually makes that super, super simple. Whereas a lot of minis companies don't actually have that, so you're kind of painting in your own little like line or dot for, for the actual iris, which can be the worst. <laughs> Let's see. So just an update. It is sunny 75 in Florida right okay. now, oh, or at least yeah. the panhandle. Uh, and then Photocoda wants to know what our Halloween costumes are this year. Halloween costumes. So I am the worst, and there is only one Halloween party that we're tentatively planning going to between my partner and I. Mm -hmm. um, there is one other thing we may go to that's some local Minneapolis comic book artist. Um, and I am trying to figure out a costume for that yeah. Um, we were trying to think of a, a, a nice couple's costume, but mm -hmm. we were very indecisive. <laughs> well, let me tell you, uh, I just ran around this weekend with my partner dressed like the chefs from Overcooked, and I oh made giant gosh. plushies for them, and I love them. Uh, and then we also have our friends, uh, Emily and Kendall, they were also chefs, so we could do a four-player, two-player game depending on where we were going. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I love, love group costumes so much. There are one thing I've never really done a ton of. Let me tell you. If you just have like the right group, obviously, mm -hmm. it's so much fun. But then ours wasn't too difficult, you know? Mm -hmm. Like the overcooked chefs, you just gotta yeah, pick a color, crazy, get yeah. an apron and a hat, and you're pretty much done. It's super easy. So if you're looking for like easy costume ideas, maybe give Dan some in the comments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, my partner and I have been watching a show an anime called My Hero Academia, which we have been debating doing costumes from that, because basically it's a bunch of, it's essentially like a superhero school, mm -hmm. um, but all the students have these school uniform like jumpsuits. So... How much of that costume do you already have? Actually, Just like none for that no? one. Okay. I have a bunch of other stuff, like I, I almost wore, I have a wizard hat that basically is like a Gandalf wizard hat that my cat kind of destroyed this weekend. And is there any saving so, it? <laughs> I don't know, regrettably. <laughs> Um, but it was a cheap hat. <laughs> it just looked very nice. Um, but I have a ton of little costume bits because we've been going to the Ren Fair the last couple of years as well. So. Oh yeah, the Ren Fair is such a great excuse, like throughout mm -hmm. the year, to continue like just gathering costume things. things. Yeah, between that and uh, like doing role playing game stuff, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I'm a very visual person, so mm -hmm. I will almost always have minis for all of the the games I play, the role-playing games, the board mm -hmm. games, um, even games that really don't have much for minis, like a game called Santorini. I painted all the little character figures for that, and they're it, it, so it's not cute. much of a mini, but they look yeah. very cute and chibi when they're done. Mm -hmm. um, so even if it doesn't have minis, yeah. it's going to have minis. <laughs> Basically. Um, but so yeah, with stuff uh, being very visual, uh, Dungeons and Dragons and stuff, uh, I just, there's like lanterns and there's little props everywhere and I probably have way too much of that around the house, but it is one of those things that is just very entertaining to me. I feel like in a good RPG group, you have to have somebody that goes all out. Yeah. Like you just have to have at least one person who's really into the props and stuff. Exactly. That so helps me. I don't have any of the props, but I really appreciate the people who do. Yeah, when you're handing someone something physical compared to just describing it, that kind of that kind of helps put a little bit of the imagination in their head if it's not already there. Mm -hmm. Oh, dang. This is really yeah. popping. Yeah. So having those two colors of metallic kind of helps diversify that a little bit, especially with how close those little uh, those little four points on it are. Um, having that gold next to that instead of just more of the same helps make it just a little bit more visually interesting. Let's see. Kyle has made his daughter a Rubik's Cube costume for a last minute costume. Oh my so God, just a lot amazing. of boxes and construction yeah. paper. <laughs> that's pretty great. <laughs> I have a friend that for a local convention for a costume made a Gundam costume that was basically just a, a giant cardboard box and a couple other cardboard boxes that just yeah. had Gundam written on it in really big letters. Mm -hmm. um, and they're one of my heroes for doing that. <laughs> I loved it. I'm trying to think of what other last minute costumes I've done. Are you... 
don't usually I usually wait for the last minute on a lot of things but for costumes I take there's one of the things I take so seriously we've been working on ours I had this idea for the overcooked thing okay. like early summer really <laughs> early summer and I told everybody uh, so you had to commit to it oh so yeah we had to commit to it and then we started working on it like a month ago um, which, again, it's such a simple costume. We did not have to work on it for a whole month. But I did. But you had to felt food. But you give, the, yeah. you give yourself that time to kind of debate, like, what kind of food do we want to have with this? Or, like, the extra little details that you want to go nuts with. You, you, can, you get yourself <laughs> the did. time to be indecisive, which is the best. I made us a tomato and lettuce so we could make a salad. And then I also made us buns and burgers so we could make burgers. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. This is a very important holiday to me. <laughs> Uh, my partner and I had debated doing uh, Team Rocket at one point, like Jesse and James. Uh, Perfect. Which would Perfect. be fantastic. But it was one of those things where we were looking at the idea of it and we're like, you're not going to be able to find those like white uniforms very easily. You could um, be like other members of Team Rocket and just do like a black shirt and put an R on it. We thought about that too, yeah. Not even, not the main ones, yeah. but just the other ones. Just find a little Meowth costume for one of our two cats. <laughs> and just get them to hate us even more. It'll be fine. That's what they're there for. That's how cats work. They just hate their owners a little bit less than everyone else in the world. Ah. Okay, I thought I messed it up, but everything's fine. And again, there's lots of little ways to kind of fix any little like errors or mistakes, or even some stuff you can just kind of kind of leave and attribute to it just being more of a natural thing or what have you. And washes tend to do you a favor as far as uh, helping cover up some stuff as well. Um, washes, since they tend to tend to hit those recesses, if there's like a nook or cranny you can't quite get into with your brush, it'll help, uh, it'll help kind of cover that up as well. I see someone said they wanted to paint their Santorini minis mm -hmm. and that the colors are too similar for the different players, which is kind of what I ran into. Mm -hmm. I did red, blue, and purple, and that mm -hmm. purple is a little bit too close to both the red and the blue. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I painted the three, and then uh, I did a little bit more of extreme highlighting to kind of try and differentiate the three. Mm -hmm. um, so bringing it to like a super bright contrast. So very dark, kind of like this brown, but then doing like a, a stark, stark, bright color, like almost... Like with this brown, you would do almost like a tan, like a bright bone tan for a highlight. Oh, dang. I'm a prodigy. <laughs> <laughs> you want to show your update, honey? Yeah. Look at that. Look at that little spooky boy. Just one spooky boy. <laughs> I think okay. I've got all my gold. How are you doing on your gold? Do you have I think I'm all done. done. Okay, so let's jump to... So one thing that I do that I probably shouldn't um, is I will use the same paint water for my metallics as I do my other colors, mm -hmm. which what you can sometimes end up with is there is metallic flex, mm -hmm. which my brush because I'm not cleaning it super well. Um, the bad boy of painting minis. Exactly. Just all my bad <laughs> habits for everyone to see. Um, but you can use actually a little bit of brush cleaner, which mine got in the backwash of my hairbrush a little bit, so it's no longer just a tan container. Um, <laughs> so you can do things like just kind of rubbing it in there, and then that you can see what's all coming off of it. Oh, dang. Just rubbing it in there. And then that also adds a little bit of a waxiness, so if you want to try that as well. And then I'll just usually hit that with a little bit of paper towel to pull that off, and then you can just kind of roll it in there, and then it helps keep that point a little bit with the brush. Um, so it's good paint I technique, but I here. use paint that, that. I use cheap paint brushes. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as having good technique with taking care of my brushes, I tend to not, outside of my <laughs> couple of really nice ones. Um, and so it's something where I'm just, if a $5 set of like all these orange brushes being super, super cheap, I think that's maybe like, eight dollars in brushes mm -hmm. right there and they'll last me those have lasted me surprisingly since adepticon in march or april 
So I've had them for quite some time and mm-hmm. not quite destroyed them yet. How often would you say you go through brushes then? Um, it used to be a lot quicker. I'm a little bit better and with things like the contrast not being as rough as like these metallics will build up on the brush a lot, mm-hmm. a lot heavier. Um, or if you don't thin like the standard Citadel brushes or uh, paints, your brush will get a little bit more of the buildup. And one of the things that will also build up is if you put paint more than like halfway up the actual bristles. Okay. That'll kind of gather there and it'll start to separate the bristles a little bit. So like an example is I have a dry brush that is, I have abused a whole bunch. So you see that those bristles are just popping out like a, just an old broom. (laughs) Um, But with a dry brush, it's fine. Cause what you're doing is you're uh, wiping off most of the paint and then it's with those spread out bristles, those stiffer bristles, it actually is what I used for the base on him so just hitting oh, okay. that lighter gray so just uh so just adds basically to the it, yeah it, it adds to the texturing and it's a, a little bit more of a forgiving technique anyways um so let's do a wash next um so let's start with the the gnome oil that's probably not in focus um so that's that black wash so we'll hit the metallics with these okay and then so a very used paint of mine so the, <laughs> the paint's a little bit further down um, and then you're just touching it on there okay. and so it'll kind of pool a little bit so you can see where it's pooling towards the middle mm-hmm. of each of those you don't need much to kind of pool and if you get a little bit of it on the brown as well um, it's a little bit more forgiving because it's a very thin paint okay but so that it basically takes the little rivets on that handle and it just kind of pools around them. Um, so washes are your best friend for getting something to look nice for the tabletop without going a little too crazy. And if you end up with a little too much, which um, I did, <laughs> you can actually, actually probably giving this to you first. Um, you can take a dry brush and oh. touch it to that. So I'll okay. have that set over there for you. Um, I'll take the cap off of this one. Um, but so what it does is, since it's such a liquid mm-hmm. form of paint, um, the dry paintbrush will actually, the bristles will actually pull it up almost like a sponge. It's super, super, both satisfying to watch and also very easy to uh, kind of correct mistakes as well. There we go. So I got... All my silvers real quick. One thing to be wary of, so much larger surfaces, so like more flat surfaces, like uh, the cloak on her, Mm -hmm. if you end up with too much of it where it's gathering too thickly, Mm -hmm. it'll create what's called tide marks, Um, especially if you try and push the pigment around after it's already started to dry where you'll have like a circle of where that paint oh, kind of was. Okay. Because um, it'll dry on the edges and work its way towards the center where it's pooled more heavily. Um, and so trying to avoid those, working with it quickly. Um, that's where washes can be a little less forgiving. Um, same with the Citadel uh, contrast paints. They're a little less forgiving if you because they dry very quickly Okay. Um, for that. but It's better to come at it with a plan. Yeah. And uh, that's one of the biggest tricks with both washes and the contrast is learning to be able to push that pigment around, almost like watercolor. Okay. Um, So let's do, so I'm doing what is actually uh, called the Reichling Flesh Shade. So it's for... (laughs) um, What a gross name. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It's for more like uh, pinkish skin tones, Mm -hmm. um, where what it'll do is it'll do a put it on a face of a mini where it's sculpted and it'll sit in all those recesses and give you that shadowing. Okay. Um, let's do that. Is this going over the gold? So this will go over the gold. Um, so the other trick that a friend had shown me, um, if you're doing more of a showpiece mini, you can feel free to grab some, um, is using actual contrasting colors. So looking at a color wheel, going gold is more of like a yellowish or like an orangish, instead using a, uh, well, more of a yellowish. Um, and then going with a purple wash will actually oh. make it pop a little bit more vibrantly. Mm-hmm. Um, with these, I like that brown kind of ties it into the actual brown of the mimic. Um, That's one of those, like, so I 
did art, I yep. that makes perfect sense. But then it also feels really weird to like implement until you I mean until you see the yeah. end results. Exactly. Sure. Um so color theory is one thing that I very much want to improve on. Uh, as kind of a personal goal. I have a lot of friends that are much better at it than I. Um, I have a friend, Michelle, that is an award-winning minis painter. Um, fantastic. And she actually was the one that showed me that trick um, mm -hmm. and just has given me advice over the years with, like, color theory and stuff like that. Um, and I have another friend, uh, Donovan, that he uh, was an art student and then just started painting minis recently. Um, and so for someone that in the last few years had started to paint minis he's just jumped leaps and bounds into it mm -hmm. um, as far as the quality of his minis just based on the fact that he knows he knows art super well and he appreciates art very well so something that he yeah, adds a little bit more appreciation so i let it cool a little bit more in that lock mm -hmm. so that lock looks much darker than the space around it as well i think i got all my Metallics. Wash my brush and sit down a little bit. So I got all my metallics and the browns. So now all the majority of it's left is going to be the actual the mouthy bit. <laughs> so let's see yeah. how yours is coming. Yeah. Check it. This is my second painted mini ever. Yeah, it's turning out fantastic. I recently came across my first ever painted unit of Space Marines from when I was 10 or 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, <laughs> that, was, that was a fun blast from the past is going back and looking at what I used to use for paints and how I, mm -hmm. how I used to... Did you ever think about doing that. a before and after? Like just taking... I, I've thought about that, yeah. The glow, um, the glow up, yeah. <laughs> I have basically the same minis, but uh, just generic Space Marines that I could, I could do that with very, very easily. Um, so let's do a little bit of, because this is where it might be a little bit harder and a little bit more detailed, is the pink mouth bit a little bit more around okay. the teeth. How are we doing? The inside? Yeah. So what I was going to do is use either the null oil, or actually there is a contrast that's like a black. Either okay. doing that black or like a dark purple or red. Um, so actually, let's do that first. Um, let's do a deep red for that. So we'll probably have to touch up the teeth a little bit with that tan. So that would be last. Yep. Okay. So basically just putting it in there. Touching it. Yeah, that red looks... Oh, that looks gruesome. Extra creepy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Time to get spooky. And the other thing with uh, paints like this that are a little bit more liquid and how they function, you want to make sure to shake the paint pots a little bit before you use it each time. Mm-hmm. Because um, they will settle a little bit, which I've run into very much with, uh, especially cooler colors like purples, blues, turquoises, which have always very much been in my wheelhouse mm -hmm. um, because they're a little bit more forgiving. Brighter colors are usually where it's a little bit harder because it's, it's lighter, it's a little bit more vibrant. You have to use a little bit more building up to get it to, to stick, whereas the contrast actually with like reds and yellows has added that a little bit more to my palette. Ooh. I don't even think I need to paint the teeth. I just want it to look super gnarly. Just super gruesome. And just, it's looking like it. Just horror movie. Horror movie gruesome. All over the place. I was gonna say I was a little bit okay. all over the place, so that is not something. <laughs> that makes to worry me feel about. better. So I think I got most of the reds. Are you done with most of the red? Or are you I, still got a little bit more? I just got a little more. Okay. So but I, I think I'm good, actually. Yeah. Okay. I will grab. Oof, so spook. <laughs> I will close that then. You can pop that back in the box. And I grab a little bit of the tan, and this is where I'll use just a hair of thinner. 
So thinning your paints, what that does is you don't end up with quite so many marks of um, like paint buildup, whereas mm -hmm. it'll look a little bit more grainy. Pigment is actually a physical thing in uh, most paints. And I probably had a little bit too much red on my eye. So, we're going over them teeth. Yeah, it won't cover probably super perfectly, but mostly to give you a little bit of that tan back, so that contrast, um, since it's so opaque, it'll show through what was underneath it a little bit more. And this might use a couple of layers. And this one may need, might need to leave dry for a moment or so. Okay. <laughs> so creepy. <laughs> now just like staring into the dark red mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gates, what's your painting experience? Oh gosh. I remember a couple of years ago I had a bear. Um, and I went to like the paint day. I was still living in Tulsa. And I was like, bear will be easy because you just need to use brown. And so I literally just like got whatever the most brownest Citadel color was, took a paintbrush and was just like slapped it on. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, it looks bad. Needs more brown. <laughs> so I just kept layering it over and over, which is not the, not the way. <laughs> just not the way. Um, and then I was trying to be hip with like the washes. So we like watered down some black paint. And just once again, not the way. Mm. Um, Didn't go so. Didn't Didn't go go so the washes. But now I work part time at a place where it has like a bunch of miniature painters that are super good. Or on Sunday, there's uh, this guy named John that comes in and paints while I run Key Forge, and uh, he's super good. <laughs> but their airbrushes and their their stuff. Yeah, so I'm gonna leave that dry a little bit and then put a second layer of tan over it. So Same. you can tell. So that's where uh, some of the paint being a little bit more opaque is less forgiving. So mm -hmm. that that deeper red, that darker color, trying to go back over it with that. I uh, had some that primer pulled down messy. into there. Yep. Is that a problem? Um, so when you hit it with a wash later, it'll shade okay. out that that color a little bit more as well. <laughs> so let's see. This is where. My patience is, is very minimal. <laughs> you I, just I, have, I just want minis done. <laughs> um, so it's something where I actually, another trick uh, a couple of friends had shown me is you take a hair dryer and you literally just hit it with a hair dryer mm -hmm. um, for like 30 seconds just on like a low heat and that'll actually just between the air and actually uh, just the heat, it'll actually dry it super, super quick for you. So then you can just be like me and just and go, go, go. Bed. And yeah. Put it under the hand dryer. Pretty sure I've seen someone do that at the, the Fantasy Flight Game Center before. <laughs> so I'll go there and paint very frequently. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, I believe that, yeah, that's a little bit dry. So I'm actually going to use a little bit more of just out of the pot. And just make sure I'm not letting it build up too thickly. At least if it's a little bit messier, more in the recesses. Mm -hmm. It's less of a deal than at least having your highlights be a little bit more, more back to that true base color. Because that is where, especially with stuff like this, where it's a little bit harder to see those recesses, as long as you're not having that primer color show through, um, people are going to be less noticeable. Um, a lot of people tend to go with what's called a like a three foot rule or six foot rule. Um, I have a friend that will always try that at me whenever we're doing uh, cosplay prop building because I always tend to want to have it super perfect and everything smooth and clean mm -hmm. cut and whatnot. Um, and especially with stuff like that, having like that six foot rule or that three foot rule, it'll look perfectly fine at that distance. <laughs> um, especially with minis, people aren't going to pick up and scrutinize every single mini you put on a board so like these mimics are more of a terrain or like an environmental effect kind of type thing mm -hmm. people aren't going to pick up every single one you throw on the board and look at them super super closely so 
is something that yeah, and if they wanted perfect forgiving. minis, they could do it themselves. Exactly. You know what? A little bit more of that first layer dry, because that red is still bleeding through a little bit. So, cleaning up a little bit. Still got a couple of teeth that I need to touch up yet. Yours are cleaning up a lot quicker than mine. I was a little bit messier with mine. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> Patty's. Yeah. Check it. Prodigy. <laughs> See them teeth? So good. Just all, <laughs> all the creepy, creepy chompers. So you actually, if you wanted to, can probably start moving on to, we'll do a little bit of a pink, and then this you're going to want to be a little bit more accurate with, hitting just those gums. Okay. <laughs> um, so this again, I'm going to start working on that as well. Total control. While I have this tan up, I will... be able to cover up. <laughs> All right. Eh. <laughs> it's so tiny. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So while we're super focused, is there anybody in the comments that do you guys have painting experience? What is your painting experience? Link us to all of your <laughs> tiny painted portfolio. minis. Link us to your portfolio. <laughs> I always love, uh, I hang out with a lot of friends that are minis painters and I love seeing other people's work as well. What well, did you also, uh, your Gen Con experience? Yeah. Didn't you like last um, minute enter something? So I was at Gen Con for the store. That was kind of our mm -hmm. store's manager retreat thing. Um, so we were all at Gen Con and I brought Just a couple of minis. This main camera is exhausted. So oh. I'm gonna go fix it. It's all good. Keep going. Okay. Okay. Um, but so I was at Gen Con and I had a couple of minis that I brought with just for kicks and giggles and I discovered they had a paint contest there, and I entered a little chibi owlbear that I had converted. I had added some extra pieces from Warhammer 2 that I basically turned him into what I called a bird barbarian. <laughs> so it was an owlbear that was also a barbarian. So it had a little hammer, uh, a little old dwarf helmet that's kind of like those cheesy opera hats where they have the horns and the big just round top. Um, and then like some pouches and a shield and stuff and had a lot of fun with that. Um, and for just on a whim, I just entered it into the paint contest thinking, professional judges, I get really nice feedback for yeah. it's like, f like two tickets, so like $4. Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up, uh, so each category had different companies sponsoring it. Um, and so they had like best of some of these different categories and mine got entered in the chibi category and I ended up winning second in my category which was an absolute shock to me because the name they called before me was someone that I look up to as a mini painter, a uh, gentleman named Vince Venturella, um, who is like award-winning, like world-class minis painter. Um, so I basically stood there in shock for about three <laughs> seconds until my, my friends Hannah and Zach with me just kind of pushed me like, man, that's you. <laughs> um, so I ended up winning second uh, in that category uh, at Gen Con. Just very happy that I did it. And it was something where even... Then after I went and got to talk to some some other minis painters I really look up to, um, there's a lady named Shoshi Mini Minis Painting uh, that she does some stuff uh, for a couple of different companies. She's done a lot of work for uh, like Kingdom Death and some other board games like that. Um, and she is someone that I've just kind of randomly followed her her work for years and years, and then getting some feedback from her and talking to her and seeing all of her entries and stuff in the contest, and it was a very, very nice experience. That was super cute. Yeah, it was real fun. And it was something I did not quite expect. Was that this year? <laughs> that was this year, yeah. And I've only just recently started doing, like, some paint contests. Mm -hmm. um, so it's something I've painted since I was 10 or 12 years old, but it was something where I never really jumped into actually doing like, think more contests stuff. are in your future? Yeah. Uh, probably. Uh, the best part is the bare minimum, you're getting like a paint score typically for a lot of contests. So mm -hmm. you're getting 
uh, feedback from from people that are amazing community members um, that are giving you personalized feedback on your individual piece that you're painting up. Um, so you're, you're finding ways to improve. Um, like that mini I was very happy with, but there's a lot of stuff uh, that I, I made mistakes on or things that I just didn't think about. So uh, one of the artists, uh, Anthony Rodriguez, uh, I think it's Pirate Monkey Painting, uh, he gave me some feedback about how it had this big, big owl bear belly. Um, and when I did all the shading, I, I did kind of the individual feathers, but I never really took that shape into account. So where the light would kind of gather at one point and mm -hmm. then kind of get darker towards the side, I just hit each feather with kind of the same kind of highlighting and shading. Um, okay. So things like that that I would have never thought about that I got feedback on. How is the pink turning out? I didn't go nuts. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's... That's off. So we don't We're have the on detail that one. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the detail one, but yeah. That is turning out fantastic. I'm so excited. It's my spooky son right there. <laughs> so we look, it looks like we have a couple of casual painters. Kyle paints for fun and relaxation. Uh, is, couldn't pay him to do it. Yeah. Kyle. Oh, you jokester. Uh, Patrick seems to paint to impress Kyle. That is valid. That is valid. I think a lot of my Inktobers, I'm just like, did Kyle like it? Please, Kyle, like me. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have uh, Amika. Amiki? I'm so sorry. Uh, they have a couple of paintings from class hanging around. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, one thing that always impresses me is when someone does minis painting, but also is like a 2D visual artist. Because oh, I yeah. am not very, I can draw maps very well. For some reason, that is one skill I picked up in like middle school. That always <laughs> stayed with me, like drawing, drawing along with uh, all the J.R.R. Tolkien, like Lord of the Rings books, drawing all the maps from that. That is something that just always stuck with me from a young, young age. I would love to do maps. I, I don't, I feel like I can't think of things on that grand of a scale. It's you know one of I mean? those things that I think, like, for me, having that randomness um, mm -hmm. and having it be a little bit more forgiving where you, that, that texture, um, that just processes in my brain very well for some reason. <laughs> Whereas doing something like painting a face, um, it will look very much like a Picasso piece real quickly with me. Those sell for a lot. So yeah, exactly. I heard they're very I would, valuable. I'd have much less in student loans if I could <laughs> uh, if I could get Picasso money for things. Hi, Alex. Sorry, I butchered your user handle. <laughs> yeah, so that looks like that is getting a little bit more forgiving with that pan. You going back and touching them up? Going back and touching up a little bit. So the nice thing with the teeth is they go down a little bit further. Oh goodness! I was really worried about just dunking the whole brush in there. I don't want to try I, how I far have down. very <laughs> much done that multiple times, especially with washes. Is always the worst. I won't pay attention, and then I use them heavily enough where usually those pots like my. My flesh shade is down to about down to about here, <laughs> so I'll go to die, and that's where you end up spilling a lot of your your washes because they're taller pots like that. You'll just dunk it in and then tilt your brush as you pull it out. And that, that, that pot kind of goes with it at that point. Taking advantage of all of our clumsy natures. Exactly. Gets Games Workshop much more money that way. They're so beautiful <laughs> and terrifying. I was gonna say it mimics the the, the best thing in uh, any role playing game or any game where if you want to give someone trust issues, you just throw a bunch of mimics in there. And then <laughs> I, I have heard of some uh, some game masters that have basically given their their players enough like scares with mimics that it will take them forever to get through a room just because they're like. That's poke it with a sharp stick from 10 feet away first, and just <laughs> see if it jumps out at us and tries to eat us. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, got most of the red from before yeah. covered up. I have that as well. So yeah. They're identical. <laughs> exactly. 
both those pictures. Yeah, we'll post tons of photos. And guess which one to use. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna put it just take a cup and then just <laughs> yeah. and then put I guess, a nice little organizer that I absolutely adore in my paint case. And let's do so the last thing that we're gonna kinda wanna do is actually let's do I have so with the pink I'm actually gonna do a purple wash. Ooh. To kind of shade that. So that's it relatively close on the color wheel. That looks a little bit more natural. So I have that brush entirely loaded, so I will tap it to there. So it gives you a little bit more control. Okay. So you can see how it's kind of hitting those indentations a little bit. So it's actually Oof. a little bit more likely to sit in between each teeth that there's that kind of valley. It'll sit a little bit better in there. Um, it looks real juicy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> real creepy. Right? Oof, yeah. Real spooky. Real spooky hours. Ooh. Ooh, it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> it's so gross. I love it. I love mimics. They're one of my one of my favorite kind of like fantasy fantasy creatures you can run into. I uh, met one of the members of Critical Role at C2E2 a couple of years ago and I always paint while I watch their show, so I I have a bunch of minis that are just generic fantasy stuff that I'll paint up just to kind of keep myself working and progressing and working on new things, um, which actually the vast minis from the first game were actually some of the first things I did with that. Oh, nice. Um, when they started their campaign, too, but I gave uh, Taliesin one of the mimics from WizKids that I painted up, and he just was ecstatic. Because it's one of those things as a game master, you'll, you'll always find a way to throw one in a game. Mm -hmm. And what? That wash may take a, a moment or two to dry, and then once we're done, we all hit the teeth. Okay. And then we can fix up any little mistakes anywhere. We're gonna get real grimy with the teeth. Yeah. Um, so a skeleton horde does a very bone white effect, which is really great. It'll actually work really nicely for the skeletons as well. Mm. Um, especially because they have lots of nice little recesses between, um, like the hands and stuff, and then the face and the teeth. It'll actually shade in those very, very nicely. Um, I adore these skeleton models just for the fact that each one has a ton of character. Mm -hmm. um, very distinct that, personalities yeah, here. And a lot of that texturing too is very good for uh, basically giving each one a unique flavor. And uh, the other thing I try and do, especially with board game pieces, they all come as colored plastic. So like the skeletons are this green. Uh, plastic, so kind of working those colors into the model itself. So like the first game, making sure, um, like the thief was, I think, blue? You can see the bottom of his base. Or gray. So he was grayish, so I had blues, and then I had more of a grayed out color, mm -hmm. color palette for the rest of them. Um, having basically matching those plastics underneath with a color that kind of matches that to make it kind of all flow together. So when you're looking at the cards or the, the pieces, the normal set pieces, um, like how the Paladin has that yellow background, being able to work that, that little bit of yellow color into it uh, ties it into the actual game very well. It looks like this is almost dry. It's real gnarly. <laughs> spoopy, spoopy. <laughs> oh, we see both of them. Yeah. We're just gonna do uh, a little bit on the teeth. Yeah. 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 You can't even tell which one's can't mine. Even tell the <laughs> <laughs> You're so good at doing such a good teacher. Yeah. Thanks you have so lots much. of very, very nice tools to work with nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, I was using Tester enamel paints as a kid, and that was, oh boy, very <laughs> not forgiving. Um, and I mean, I basically went. And talked to my dad and raided his his basement little cubby hole of of old model mm -hmm. paints from when he was younger and growing up and remember growing up with him making like a Saturn V rocket and stuff like that and painting up that stuff with him. Um, so using all of those older tools were nice, but there's a lot of technology like the contrast paints, the shades, the ink washes. You used to have to make your own ink mm -hmm. washes. So uh, what would you consider like from the time that you started to now? Like what is big game changer for you? Um, the contrast has been amazing. Um, and that's relatively new, right? Yeah, it's less than a year old, like a couple of months old. Mm -hmm. um, so in the last two months, I've had two Warhammer armies because I'm dumb. Uh, I had an event that I didn't paint 
my Dark Eldar, they're basically Dark Elves in space. Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't painted that army until about a month before an event, and it was about 72 models that I painted up in about three and a half weeks. Um, and I have an event next week, I'm, next weekend I'm going to, uh, that it's 14 models, they're bigger, they're like big heavy cavalry riding, big, uh, like, saber tusk kind of looking mounts. Um, that the contrast is made super, super easy because of all the textured fur and sitting in those recesses. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I painted 12 mounts in like five, six hours. That's awesome. Um, so less than an hour per mini. Um, so it has made my life so much easier for those <laughs> things. Um, and especially with commission painting, you can take them and I'm showing a little bit more of quick techniques. Um, but I can, like I did a, a present for some friends that got married that they both love like fantasy and corgis. Um, so there's a company called Impact Minis that made a little chibi adventure, like wizard corgi with a lantern attached to his hat and everything mm -hmm. that was adorable. Um, and I basically bought like a nice wood plinth that said your adventure begins and then the date of their wedding and then painted it up to a really nice like showpiece That's quality. So um, but I used mostly contrast paints, but still was basically able to build off of them, highlight using mm -hmm. regular traditional acrylics. Um, so it'll give you that base where it's the, the shadows and then like your mid-tone and then being able to blend in highlights and stuff like that over that. It's been like a huge game changer for a piece that would take me like days to accomplish. It took me like a set number of hours instead, like 10 or 12 mm -hmm. hours compared to something that would take like 24 or 30 hours of work. Holy moly. So yeah, it, it has made my, my life so much easier. <laughs> So that looks like it's dry. So we'll take the skeleton horde so you can see. It's not going to change it a ton. But this one you can put on a little bit heavier. Right. And you want to kind of concentrate it a little bit more towards the base of the teeth. Oops. Which, if not, you can take your dry brush and kind of lick away a little bit of that that's towards the top of the teeth or the other thing you can do is what we can as I throw my brushes <laughs> I love my tools I just throw them everywhere um, the other thing you can do is you can kind of do like a spot highlight after where you're hitting more of the raised edges with that brightest color that brightest tone gotcha. Oh, I'm so pleased. His teeth are so gross. <laughs> so I'll take a moment to dry, and then actually I'll pull out this one that I put out before I put back. It's so gross. <laughs> Extra creepy spoopy. I love it. And we'll use this one again once this dries in a moment. Do you need more of the? Chance? No, I think yeah. I'm good. Perfect. Um, and this will actually work really well for things like the eggs too. So where the eggs are all sitting in that, that kind of basket, uh, you can use like the contrast white will give you a little bit more of like a whitish gray shading for the actual webbing. And mm -hmm. then using that tan gives you that kind of cream color in between each egg too. Beautiful. This is where I'd take a hair dryer because I have the patience of a squirrel. <laughs> I'm gonna, I, I just need to bury the food now. I'll just find it later. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like that squirrel from, uh, what is it, Ice Age. Oh, it's yeah. It's just like manic. I'll just, in a fury, just paint minis and go nuts. That looks so good. Yeah. How do you feel, Penny? I'm so pleased with this. <laughs> I'm really happy. Yeah. Like, painting just seems like, especially at this scale, feels really daunting and a little intimidating, but this is, you've made it, it so much more accessible yeah, for me. Yeah, they've made a lot of really, really nice tools. Like, uh, I also brought for the walls um, this panel line accent color. So, like, a lot of historical gamers will use that or historical models where you're building, like, big battleships and stuff, mm -hmm. or, like, I use it for, like, starships. Mm -hmm. um, it's got actually a little brush in the handle. Oh, it's so tiny. Um, but you basically touch that to a line, like in between all those bricks, mm -hmm. and it, it literally just goes Fills. and shades and fills, and it's like a solid, they make like black, brown, gray, and one or two other colors, mm -hmm. but it is, I took like a Star Wars model ship, and I just touched it to all the different panel lines, 
and then touched up some of the panels, made them look a little bit more weathered, and wasn't spending the time just sitting there hitting yeah. each individual line and then cleaning up the excess. It was just bonk, and then it was done. So it looks like that tan's a little bit more dry, so I am going to take a little bit of that. And I also sometimes have the messy habit of I'll use my paper towel almost like a palette. <laughs> this turned out. I'm going to take pictures of it and then I'll frame it. <laughs> Just I'm going to put it in our lobby. Yes. I, I was going to say, I, I thought about getting some sh uh, some shadow boxes for like framing oh, yeah. up minis and displaying them. I have a couple of little curio cabinet thingies um, and I keep meaning to go to Ikea and get an actual like curio cabinet. Back at my parents' house I have one, but not out here. Um, but something to display the minis, but uh, a couple of friends have started using shadow boxes with a bunch of little dividers that mm -hmm. they'll put on their wall, and they'll have like a series of, uh, my friend Michelle has a Inquisitor Warband for Warhammer, mm -hmm. where it's just all the Raging Heroes, Toughest Girls in the Galaxy models. Um, so it's just all these kick butt, kick butt <laughs> ladies with a bunch of like swords and guns and stuff that she has all in the one display, and then they have more of these are minis we painted in painting class in another. Mm -hmm. Do you want to touch up some of the... the I want them to be super grimy. You want them to be super grimy? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> like so. me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So fancy, good. Fancy. But seriously, though, I'm very pleased. Yeah. They turn out so good. We're going to take pictures of them. We're going to shuffle them around, and we're going to have you guys guess and yeah. see which one was mine. Yeah. So take a close look at it now. <laughs> see if you can memorize all the nuances. Yeah. That's so cool. This yeah. is the before we put them in the cups and spin them around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have an after later. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. I had a great time. Yeah. yeah. So I think we're going to take a little break, break and yes. then Dan's going to come back later. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs>